Hello everyone, it's Allie from Titan and welcome back to our channel. I am here with just one large personal break today. As you guys can see down in the bottom right hand corner, we do have a full slate for Todd S. from Minnesota. We do have two boxes of Series 2 Hockey. We also have two boxes of 2021 Topps Heritage Baseball. So we're going to be opening up these four boxes here in this one video. And we're we'll going to be starting with those two boxes of Series 2 Hockey. Of course, do our recap of those boxes together, move on into the heritage, and do the recap of the heritage at the end of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and set these behind me. Like I said, these boxes are all for Todd S. from Minnesota. So thank you so much, Todd, for letting me open all these products on up for you today. Hope you enjoy the opening and get some awesome new cards in your collections. Let's go ahead and get started with the hockey because this video is going to be quite long. Bye. Snapping us into the corner and let's get started. So average of six young guns per box on each of these series two hockey hobby boxes, eight cards per pack, 24 packs per box. Let's get started here, grab tiny knife and here we go, get on into box number one. Now we've been having some crazy luck recently with series two hockey. I feel like I say that every time we open up a box here on the channel, but most of our boxes have been super awesome. We've seen in recent times another couple of Canvas Stutzlas, another Canvas Caprizov. Totally, we've seen two French Caprizov, seen some really nice clear cut young guns of Dylan Cousins, seen a French Cousins recently as well. So, a lot of awesome stuff coming out of Series 2. And here we go. Let's get started. Pack number one. It is getting quite sad. We are almost sold out of Series 2 hockey. Just have, oops, runaway base card there. We just have one box left in stock. Igor Zamula, Marky Rookie. And then I think we will take some time off from Series 2. We may have some boxes still left in the shop. We are a physical card shop in Pinellas Park, Florida. If you are local to the Tampa Bay area, our address and website are linked in the description down below. So we may still have some boxes in the shop, but in terms of boxes in the online store, just one remaining here. And then it'll be, it'll be all gone. So... Very curious to see what these last handful of boxes have in store for us. And what do we have here? Every time I see this Kucherov card with the, I'm guessing, uh, something on the, the boards, I think it's some sort of red parallel, but it's just the background sticking out. We have Portraits Rookies Thomas Harley and a French variant Marcus Pedersen here for the Pittsburgh Penguins. That is card number 394, Variant Francais. That Kucherov card always throws me off. All right, here we go. Next pack. Portraits Rookies Knees Off. But it's crazy to think how much Series 2 we've gone through on the channel. Uh, upwards, I think, of close to eight cases. Uh, so definitely a lot. Hey, look at that. We have a checklist card here. Checklist Young Guns. Stutzel and Cousins for our first of six Young Guns in the box. Go ahead and get that sleeved on up. Very, very nice card couple of very nice rookies. A little two for one there. I like the checklist cards. I know not everyone is crazy about them, but I like them. Hey, another nice young gun here, Alexander Romanov for the Montreal Canadiens. Very, very nice. Off to a really good start here for Todd. Another young gun here. We have Tim Stutzla. Very nice. We're just on a roll. On a roll. Three for three here on our young guns. This is incredible. And I'm looking at my pile. As soon as we sleeved up that one checklist card, I was like, ooh, we're running a little low on penny sleeves. Should have refilled up my box before we got started. Maybe we won't have too much to sleeve. And of course, we keep finding really nice cards to sleeve up. And I'm actually going to go ahead and top load that Stutzla. But off to a very good start here. Yeah, I'm telling you, those Series 2 boxes we've had have been absolutely wonderful. Portraits Rookies Broberg. We have Mackenzie Entwistle for the Blackhawks for Young Gun number 4. Portraits Rookies Laugh. A very nice insert to pull. 
Really like the images on the portraits rookies. I feel like some of the Series 1 portraits cards didn't have the greatest images, but I'm really liking 99% of the portraits rookies set here in Series 2. They do look very nice. And I do like the colors. I know some people with Series 1 were like, ooh, this is a little bit too 90s for me. I do like that electric pink and the blue in the background. We have Matthew Barzal for our first canvas of the box. We have our Dazzlers coming on up behind this Barkov canvas. Dominique Kubelik, Dazzlers. Getting one Dazzler, blue per box. If you get a pink, and that is more rare. That is a parallel, uh, but that counts as a bonus. I'm always seeing one Dazzler per box. Award winners, Dry Saddle. In retail, I believe you can get green and orange Dazzlers. Still have yet to see any Series 2 retail around. I wonder if it's still not out yet. I know retail was supposed to be coming out a couple weeks after the hobby release. And I still haven't seen any. Marky Rookie Larmy. Canvas Kevin Fiala for the Wild. Canvas Mitch Marner for the Maple Leafs actually pulled an autograph of his this past weekend out of a box. There are some unannounced autographs in Series 2 on the checklist. It was only showing the Martin Brodeur autos, number to 30. But we have found now two different Signature Sensations autographs from this product. So they are not common, but they do exist. Matthias Brome, Young Gun. And we are most likely looking for just one more Young Gun here in these remaining packs of box number one. Marky Rookie Broberg. We have Alec Regula, or potentially our final young gun here. Could still find a canvas. We've already had a base French variation, so most likely not another young gun French, but we'll see. We have a pink Dazzler, John Gibson here for the Ducks. Get that sleeve on up as well. I have gone through a ton of penny sleeves today. Listing, I listed a ton of stuff on our TCG player store today. Lots of actually Yu-Gi-Oh cards, older Yu-Gi-Oh foils. Saw a lot of really cool looking stuff. Stuff that I hadn't realized gone up in price so much since the days when I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh. But that ate through a ton of sleeves. I feel like just based on the amount of packs of sleeves I went through, probably listed upwards of 300 cards, 300 Yu-Gi-Oh cards today. And hey, look at that, we have a fluorescence Mikey Anderson. Very cool, I love these fluorescence inserts. We'll definitely have to make a sleeve trip, probably after we get through both of our Series 2 Hockey Hobby boxes. We'll do a quick cut, move them off camera, and then get on into the Heritage with a fresh pile of sleeves. Peachy Retro Marky Rookie Ottinger. And final pack here, box number one. We have award winners Retro, Kale McCarr. All right, so that does it for our first box of four here for Todd. I've gotten the Series 2 Hockey Hobby boxes pretty much down to a science, so they shouldn't take too, too long. I think the bulk of our time will be in those two heritage boxes, just because we have to look for our high numbers, and of course keep an eye out for the inserts that, to, that do tend to blend in with the regular set. That is probably my number one complaint about heritage, is that the inserts, there's not too many of them, uh, do kind of look like the regular base cards. So if you're not paying attention, you can't just kind of, you know, with the hockey, when you go to the inserts, you can definitely tell they're different from the base. If you kind of zone out while opening Heritage, you're probably going to not, not pull out what you need to be pulling out. But here we go. Let's get on into box number two here. And I am still sounding very funny to myself when I talk. I've been struggling with allergies this past week now. And ooh, we have a clear-cut Valeri Nichuskin for the Colorado Avalanche. Really like these clear-cut parallels. Not familiar with this player. But I always love clear cuts. They're my favorite parallels. 
my favorite inserts out of Series 1, Series 2 hockey are the canvas. Favorite parallels are the clear cuts. Even more so than the high gloss. Those are nice and shiny, but for me, just can't beat those acetate cards. So I sound really weird to myself when I talk. Uh, I'm hopeful my ears maybe will pop this afternoon. Definitely feeling a lot better. You know, if I could actually just breathe through my nose, I, I and, you know, it'd be great. But my, my throat is no longer sore. Started, uh, I switched over to taking some really, really strong mucinex. So, definitely been working well for me today. And I'm hopeful that maybe by tomorrow, I won't be sounding weird anymore. I'd asked you guys yesterday during our videos if I sounded, you guys said I sound a little different, but not, not really. So I'm curious to see if I sound worse or the same or better today. So let me know in the comments, Keegan Cole, sorry, young gun. Cause I feel like now when I'm talking to you guys, I feel like I sound worse than yesterday. But like I said, just could be, it could be all made up in my head, who knows. But I'm not sick if you guys are like, oh, Allie, you sound weird. I'm not sick, don't worry. Just lots of allergies. It is supposed to rain later this week here, though. So hopefully that'll finish clearing out all the pollen. Because it is still gross outside with so much pollen everywhere. Jake Ottinger, Portraits Rookies. Portraits Rookies Geeky. So we found a clear cut so far here in box number two. Still looking for a French variant and of course six more young guns. Well, actually the Colesar is from this box. So five more young guns here in box number two. Portraits Rookies de Pietro and variant Francais Joel Erickson here for the Minnesota Wild. So we have our French now. Still like I said on the lookout for more young guns and Technically, Young Gun Canvas cards, the odds uh, end up you getting about six per case. So there are 12 boxes per case. So odds are on our side to also be finding a Young Gun Canvas parallel here in box number two. So let's continue. Award winners, Matt Doomba. We have Canvas, Jonathan Taze. Portraits Rookies, Peyton Krebs. Oh, we have another young gun here. Looks like Mason Marshmont. Yep, Mason Marshmont here for the Florida Panthers. Marky Rookie and Whistle. Young Gun here, Capriza, very nice. Very nice here for Todd. Getting both of our top hits here, Stutzla and Capriza out of two boxes, congratulations. Go ahead and get him top loaded on up as well. And we'll see what lies here in the rest of this box. Two very nice boxes here to start off this four box break. Now, of course, these are only two hockey hobby boxes, but we'll see. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I had mentioned in today's post that it's been some time since we saw an autograph come out of Heritage. We have opened up, I think out of the case, two or three autos already. Have also seen our purple refractor hot box. But the autos we had opened up, we had an Evan White rookie auto, a Pete Alonzo auto, and I feel like we had another one as well. So, most recent boxes, hey, we have a Young Gun canvas, see the little brown sticking out there. But I feel like it has been a while since we've opened an auto, so hopefully we'll find at least one of those boxes right behind me. But we have Young Gun canvas Matthias Brome here for the Red Wings. A little bonus here, box number two. Now, most often, French Young Guns and Canvas Young Guns exclusives, high gloss, 
any other parallels, clear cut, things like that. Do count as bonuses. However, out of all the boxes, we've opened a ton here, so very low percentage. But on occasion, we've had boxes that have had five regulars and the ones that are typically bonuses actually fulfilling the sixth spot. So just be mindful of that. You feel like you might be missing a young gun. It does happen. And instead of having one of those as a bonus, it does just count for your full six. Um, this is the first year we've seen it, although I've been able to open up a lot more Series 2 than even Series 1. We had a lot in, uh, of Series 1 this year, and of course Series 1 and 2 on the channel from last year, 1920, Series 1, Series 2. Uh, but the volume of breaks of 2021 Series 2 hockey here on the channel is much greater, and so we've seen some things that we haven't normally seen before. So just be mindful of that. It is possible, but most of the time you're getting 6 plus a bonus if you do get a French or some other kind of fancy young gun. We're getting close to the end of the second hockey box here. Of course, I'll do our recap once we get there. Brock Nelson for the Islanders canvas. And Jake Ottinger is our regular dazzler of the box. Not expecting to see another pink when we did our multi-case break live on release day. We are seeing two pinks per case. Although I feel like we've been seeing more pinks recently, so maybe we just got a little unlucky there. Maybe it's supposed to be three per case. But Chase Prisky, Young Gun, here for the Panthers. So definitely the pinks feel very rare in comparison. I felt like we saw... I feel like it kind of switched. I felt like the Young Gun canvases were harder to find in Series 1 and the Pink Dazzlers were more easy. But maybe I'm just misremembering because it has been some time since we've opened up Series 1. Series 1 was definitely very fun, though. Also, I'm noticing it is easier to pull Kaprizovs than it was Lafreniere's in Series 1. Kevin Lankin in for the Blackhawks. Get him sleeved up as well. But Stutzla out of Series 2 here does seem about the same rarity as Laf was out of Series 1. Alexander Yellison for the Calgary Flames. We have a red award winner's Roman Yossi here. Very nice. The award winner's red parallels are much harder actually to pull than the marquee rookie award win or the marquee rookie red parallels. I think the the marquee rookies are like one in two forty two two something odd packs. And the award winners are like one in seven hundred and some odd packs for the red parallels. Very cool pull here for Todd. And final pack here of Series 2, we have Marky Rookie Retro Guile Sen for New Jersey. But all right, that does it here for these two hockey boxes. Make sure to stay tuned. The Heritage will be coming up afterwards. Let me go ahead and straighten this on up and get into our two box hockey recap and I actually had the exact amount of penny sleeves necessary so I will be doing a little quick cut between the heritage boxes and these moving all the hockey off to the side and grabbing some more penny sleeves so we are ready to go for heritage let's go ahead and take a look at the fruits of our two boxes here did have a lot of nice young guns and some fancy parallels the red Roman Yossi award winners young gun canvas Matthias Brome Clearcut Valeri here for the Avalanche. Fluorescence Mikey Anderson. Pink Dazzlers John Gibson. Lankin and Young Gun. Romanov. Stutzla and Cousins Checklist. Two French variants Pedersen and Erickson. Then we also had our top two boys here Kaprizov and Tim Stutzla for Young Guns. Let's take a look at our other Young Guns here because, of course, you never know who's going to become a breakout star. We also had Yellison, Prisky, Marshmont, Colsar, Regula, Brome. We had his matching canvas and Mackenzie Entwistle. That does it for these two boxes of series two. Like I said, give me a moment, everybody, and I'll be back as soon as I can with the heritage. I say as soon as I can, but of course it'll be momentarily for you guys since it's on video. I went into just my regular stream mode. Oh, I'll be back as soon as I can. But hang tight, everyone. Let me actually myself into the heritage i am back everybody as you all can see and of course as usual we'll do a recap at the end of these two boxes here for todd and then we'll wrap off the video as the personal break will be finished let me go ahead and actually i'm going to set this one box here off to the side heritage does tend to have a lot of piles uh, there's not too many inserts but 
the cards do tend to take up room because we also need that extra spot for our box topper, whether it be an oversized card, a poster, or a buyback, or even an autographed card, and also our high number short prints. But here we go, let's get started. Heritage box number one for Todd. So the box toppers, if you guys haven't seen any 2021 Heritage openings, unfortunately don't come in any kind of pack. Tops, I guess, decided to save a little bit of money and not sleeve any box stoppers that were not autographed. But we do have an oversized box loader here. Thankfully, it is in nice condition here. Trevor Bauer. We did actually have one box loader this past weekend, an oversized actually Mike Trout card that did have a damaged corner. Otherwise, we've been pretty lucky here. Haven't seen anything other than that one Mike Trout. And it only showed through actually on the back. You couldn't tell on the front, but you could tell on the back it had a little bit of a crease. Uh, but we've actually had some people open up boxes in store that actually ended up with bent cards. Like, I guess, a little bit too much pressure put on the top of the box and ended up bending the inner one. Because it does seem like the packs do slide around much easier than I'm used to here in Heritage. But let's get started. Pack number one, our high number short prints. And people have been asking me a lot what the high numbers are. So I'll go ahead and explain it for you guys so you don't have to ask in the comments. I'm always willing to answer questions, so don't feel afraid to ever ask anything. But just so it's easier for all of us, I'll explain it. The regular base set here of Heritage is cards number 1 through 400. Then there is a high number set, 401 through 500, that are harder to find. We're seeing about 8 per box, so a short print set to finish off your base set. So those are those high numbers. Do have one here, pack number 1, 439, Cam Gallagher for the Royals. And I've been noticing they are not always in the same spot. So can't with, with Heritage, you can usually be like, oh, if you don't get an insert, check the middle card. It does seem like they're kind of mixed around this year. Also had a news flashback insert here, Bilingual Cameroon Unites. I'll also be trying to pull out some of the nicer rookie cards as well. We have a then and now insert, Allen and Santana. There are also, if you notice, looking at the back, be like, Allie, that looked weird. There are also some cool puzzle cards. I do love puzzle cards. So I'm a bit torn on Heritage. I'm not crazy about the base design. I feel like it's a bit repetitive. I do like the way the Jumbo cards look. I like the flashback inserts, but otherwise, I feel like I'm not too crazy about this year's design. But I do appreciate the puzzle cards. So, not sure how I feel on it 100%. We have a Rookie Stars dual rookie insert. Well, not insert here, but... Dual rookie base card, Ryan Mountcastle and Bobby Dalbeck. And baseball flashbacks, Jenkins Logs 20th win of the season. I also feel like I've kind of been ignoring pulling out the multi-rookies. You can get dual rookies and triples. Uh, but I am trying to. If you see me pause looking at a card, it's because I'm trying to check out the names on those multi-cards. Try and pull those off to the side as well. That way we can take a look and get a fuller grasp of our rookie pulls in our recaps. There's also, I think, one card missing. Tops actually just accidentally didn't print. I don't know if it was card number 312 or 412. Don't remember the player's name either, but it exists in the refractors. It doesn't exist in the regular base. So Tops did say they would be putting that in Heritage High Number, and they apologize for any confusion. So that's pretty crazy. Tops just neglected to print one of the cards. Like I said, it does exist in the refractor parallels. So I'd assume people who pre-sold sets were like freaking out. They're like, can't find this one card. Why is it so hard to find? Turns out it just doesn't exist. So that one card to complete your actual full set of regular heritage will be coming in heritage high number. It's like, how do you mess that up? We have a high number here, Jeremy Jeffress for the Cubs. Haven't seen too, too many rookies here. We have a Harrison Bader high number for the Cardinals. Haven't seen more than one high number in a pack. So I guess I don't need to keep looking after we've already found one. We have an upside down. We have several upside down cards. All right, back to normal. Interesting. Interesting. 
Also, if you have a flip stock card, where the card feels like it was printed backwards, where it's smooth on the back and kind of textured on the front, those are flip stock cards and they are unnumbered. However, only five of each exist. We did pull one this past weekend for Jacob W. Alec Bomb rookie, I'll pull that off to the side. So that was cool. Found out after the fact, a couple of people in chat checked the checklist and noticed that it stated the flip stocks were numbered to five. So pretty cool pull there regardless of which player. Definitely rare if you guys have one. Again, with the flippy floppy here. Feels like we're getting panini but we're getting panini by tops. What is this craziness? Panini is pretty notorious for having cards facing every which way direction. Uh, but Topps has been doing it with Series 1 recently, Series 2, Update, and of course now, not very common, but we've been having it a little bit here today with Heritage. It just makes my life a little bit more difficult because I do want everything facing the proper direction. And we have a Team Colors variant here, Yadier Molina. That is cool. So what actually changed? Hmm... On the team colors, it's always a bit weird. I can't quite tell offhand what changes on the team colors, but it does let us know there are team color variants here at Yadier Molina. So I'll definitely go ahead and get that sleeved on up. If we catch another Molina card in the rest of this box, I'll go ahead and try and compare it. Did I not bring my sleeves? I did not. Of course, how could I forget? How could I forget? All right, hang tight, everyone. All right, I am back. I'm going to blame that on the congestion. I one track minded just moving all that series two hockey off to the side and declined to go get more penny sleeves, even though that of course is what I said I was going to do, but I am back and no additional time on your guys' part for me to go and grab those. But here we go, let's continue. And like I said, I'll try and keep an eye out for a Molina card, but if I miss one, I wouldn't be too surprised because I'm just mainly looking for those little RC stamps. Great one, insert Clemente. We do, however, have a whole nother box to go through, so maybe we'll see one in box number two if I do pass over one here accidentally in box number one. Ooh, we have a refractor coming up. Really like the way the refractors look. Really not liking the paniniitis here, though. Back and forth, back and forth, but we have Kyle Schwarber, refractor. That is number 209 out of 572, and a New Age Performers insert of Ian Anderson. Ryan Mountcastle rookie, and dual rookie here, Casey Mize and Tarek Skubal. So definitely a lot of nice cards here in the pack. Can't complain too much about that paniniitis, I suppose. Man, even Topps is getting infected with the paniniitis, you guys. Craziness. New Age Performers insert Jeff McNeil. Uh, I believe we've also seen a Jeff McNeil auto. I think that was the one I was forgetting. And high number here, AJ Pollock. I think that's what it was. Saw Pete Alonzo, Jeff McNeil, and Evan White autographs. Joe Adele and Nick Madrigal rookie. This is funny, we actually had a purple refractor of Lubob come out of our hot box, and it actually had an RC stamp on it, so it was an error card. So that was very interesting to see. Definitely not supposed to have the RC stamp there. High number, Kevin Gosman. Still waiting on our guaranteed hit of the box. Can be getting one of those clubhouse collection relics. A real one on card autograph. Not sure if they have the coin autos here, or corn relics rather. No, Heritage Minor League does the coin relics, where they actually have. So I think this is based on the 72 design. Yep, that's what it says. So a coin from 1972 inside of a card as a relic, usually numbered to 50 or less. Not sure if Heritage, regular Heritage has, as we haven't seen one just quite yet. 
We have a dual rookie here, Baum and Howard. A little bit of the flips. None of those being high numbers. Let's see, we have Shogo Akiyama here, high number for the Reds. Remember his stuff out of last year's, I think, Series 2 got hot for a little bit. Not sure how he's performing so far this year, although the season did just start uh, a couple weeks ago. So it wouldn't be too fair to judge just quite yet. Although I've heard Juan Soto has been doing very, very well. I saw a funny gif of him last night making a face after a kind of a little bit of an iffy strike was called, and he was like... I thought that was very funny. I've heard pretty good things about Juan Soto so far. There he is. The man himself this season. All right, down to the last row of box number one. And we do have our relic of the box. It is a Clubhouse Collection AJ Puck relic. Game used memorabilia. Unnumbered, just a base relic. Oh, I wonder if they're not actually upside down. I wonder if it's just the way the cards are printed. That they're not printed 100%. I remember actually update last year, 2020 update, had some issues where the backs on some cards were upside down. So I'm not sure if that's what's happening here, and I'm just attributing it to Panini-itis. But if I were to flip the numbers to face up, the, the line up in the right direction here, uh, the card would be upside down. So not sure if that's the case. But anyways, let's continue, finish off this first box for Todd with these last two packs. And I'm still trying to keep an eye out for Melina. All right, final pack here, box number one. Well, box number three, technically. But box number one of Heritage. One more chance to find... Yeah, I'll pull out the Joey Bart rookie, why not? One more chance to find an on-card autograph tonight for Todd. So let me go ahead, move the base out of the way. Heritage does yield a lot of base. Also move that box. Just put that right behind me. I'll flatten it up later for recycling. Just Like I said, just a few inserts here. I have noticed opening boxes. You're always getting one news, one baseball flashback, but... You can get one of two of these and two of whatever the third one is. I've seen boxes with two then and now, and seen boxes with two, two of the Clemente inserts, and of course box number one did have two New Age performers. But this pile here, well this little conglomeration of inserts and their, their amounts does vary box to box. But here we go, let's get on into box number two. Hopefully we'll see another undamaged box topper. We've only seen one poster so far. Actually, I believe we've seen probably an equal amount of jumbo cards and buybacks. We actually have another buyback here. Art Shamsky, 50th anniversary buyback here. So that's an original card from the 72 set. Very cool. Go ahead and get that sleeved on up and put it in our pile of little goodies up in this top right-hand corner. Let's pop the top of this box. This box doesn't have any packs all, all, all freshly moved. So maybe, won't have any panini ideas. Let's see, get started, pack number one. Before I do though, I'm curious actually, how many high numbers do we have in box number one? Just so we can keep count. We did have eight. I think we're seeing eight most of the time. I feel like we started off seeing seven. Could have missed one here, here or there. But now it seems like most of the time we are finding eight. Then and now insert Carlton and Bauer. Can I tell that this is going to be a Panini-itis box, as the last card in the pack is at least upside down? Yes. <laughs> All right, we have news flashback. Watergate scandal begins with break-in. High number, Aaron Savale here for the Indians. So we can go ahead and put that base that I had set off the side to check out that news insert uh, back in the file.
Baseball flashbacks. K-Line delivers game-winning RBI in AL East Divi Division clincher. That was actually a lot more text on that card than I expected. That is the title of the card. <laughs> that is a lot of text. That is baseball flashbacks. A K for Al K line. Ryan Mountcastle rookie boyhood photos edition. Charlie Morton should get like a salt sponsorship. Isn't that like actually the name of like a, a salt company, Charlie Morton Salt, something like that? Is that him? I don't know. Probably not. I'm just thinking like the Morton Salt Man, isn't that like a, it's not a thing. Am I just losing my mind? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like my attempts at humor don't go very well. Hey, Pache rookie. That was actually a serious question. Humor tinged, but very serious. Isn't like the Morton Salt thing? Christian Vasquez, high number. Ooh, we have high number Yordan here. Card number 500, the final card in the set. The true full set of Heritage. Right, next pack. Joe Adele, rookie in action edition. And high number, Logan Webb for the Giants. We have something flipped here, Dylan Cease. This is a black border parallel. Dylan C's for the White Sox. Very cool. Get you sleeved up, Mr. Cease. Seems like you're getting either a refractor or a black border per box. Ooh, we have a base chrome here with Merrifield. Number 933 out of 999. That's actually a high number here, Whit Merrifield. So if you pull his base, you know it's a high number. But interestingly enough, I feel like we've actually seen more chromes, uh, chrome refractors than regular chromes. I can only recall seeing two off the top of my head. However, I know we've seen several actual refractors numbered out of 572. Wonder if maybe they're more plentiful in retail. Remember, that was a thing with the gold parallels out of Series 1. Felt like those were very lacking per box. The card's numbered out of 2021. So there should be a ton of them. There are 2,021 gold parallels for those cards from Series 1. But apparently those were just more plentiful in retail than the hobby releases. New Age Performers insert to Tease. The salt man is back, potentially. Potentially. Unconfirmed to me at this moment. New Age Performers insert Max Freed.
high number, Luke Weaver here. Convenient, here's the card on top. High number, Jack Flaherty for the Cardinals. So if we do actually get a total of 16 high numbers here, Todd, you will be 16% of the way completed on your high number set. 16% better than 0%, you know, assuming they're all uh, unique cards, not duplicates. We have Pache and Garcia, dual rookie card there. And we are, of course, still waiting on our hit of the box, although it is seeming like uh, they are always in the last row. That is something I've noticed. For a while, it was the middle pack, but I do believe, actually, last box we saw it in the bottom right pack. But just keep in mind, if you're buying from an open box, like at your local card shop, I would ask if they have been mixed up. Because it does seem like, in theory, someone could just buy the, oops, runaway card, buy the last row of the box, be like, hey, give me all three packs in the bottom, and scoop up the hit from the box. Of course, you can still find parallels, action variants. Haven't seen any, but French language variants do exist in this product. You know, if there's like a flip stock or something in the box as well, maybe a bonus hit. I don't think we've seen any bonus hits, but, you know, you, you never know. Uh, I, I would definitely be a little bit hesitant if they weren't mixed to buy any loose packs. Casey Mize, rookie. I mean, me personally, I wouldn't be buying any Heritage this year. I'm not the biggest fan. I do like the Refractors. I like the Jumbo cards. Of course, nice rookies in this product, but it's it's not, not necessarily to my design tastes. But in general, just letting you guys know that would be my position on it. Definitely be a little bit wary of boxes opened up for packs. Does seem like always the last row has the hits. Or at least more often than not, that you should still be aware that there's a possibility someone just cleaned out the box. We have another Clubhouse Collection Relic, though. Unfortunately, auto list tonight. Chris Sale for the Red Sox. Joe Adele rookie. That is, I believe, our second in action Joe Adele. Let's get that Clubhouse Collection, then we'll check the rest of that base for any high numbers. So two relics, a regular chrome, a refractor, a black parallel, and a team color swap variant, which I might have missed one, but I was attempting to keep my eyes peeled for a Molina. Won't dig through the base after the fact. But it did say team color swap. Don't know what changed. I know last year the team color ones were actually like the little nameplate was a different color, uh, but I was trying to look maybe like the text on top. I was like, I can't really tell what's different uh, just because a lot of different teams have different colors in the background. Maybe the background color is different. I don't know, but the Cardinals you think would be red. I don't know. Don't know there. Maybe he's in a different jersey. I really don't know. If you guys know, let me know in the comments because I think I failed in my quest to find a Molina. Interesting seeing Evan Longoria still on cards. Of course he still plays. Trevor Bauer, high number. But I'm so used to just him being on the Rays that anything else, it's like, ooh, that's weird. I know it's been a long time since he's been on the Rays. It's been a while since he is with his new team, but it still feels a little bit weird to me mentally to see it. Same thing, like, actually, when I go through hockey, I kind of pause. I don't know if it shows to you guys, but mentally I pause on the, the Volteri Fipla cards. Um, one, that's a very uh, handsome man. <laughs> Two, I'm used to him playing for the Lightning. I was sad when he got traded, but also my mom was too. Like I said, very handsome guy. But let's go ahead and do a recap here of the two Heritage boxes for Todd. Did end up with a total, of course, two baseball flashbacks, two news flashbacks. And it looks like both boxes were double new age performers insert boxes. So a total of two then and now, two great ones, four new ages across the two boxes. Let's take a look and also count out our high numbers. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So either I missed one in box number two, or we just had another seven high number box. Like I said, we've seen boxes with seven. If I missed any, it's possible. If not, maybe it's just variants. The lowest actually we've seen per box is six. 
Although, like I said, take that with a grain of salt. You know, I talk while I open. I'm not 110% focused. We do ship all base, though, so if you guys are like, Al, you missed one in pack number 27, uh, Todd will be getting that high number. He just has to, unfortunately, look for it himself. But if he's making sets, definitely has to sort through all the base regardless. Also, we did have a very nice chunk of base cards that were good rookies. We had Joe Adele, Casey Mize, the Pache Garcia duel. Is the same Joe Adele, Pache in action, Boyhood Photos, Mount Castle, Joey Bartz, Alec Baum, Spencer Howard, Joe Adele, Nick Madrigal, Mize, Scooball, Mount Castle in action, Baum in action, and the Mount Castle, Dalbeck. Then let's take a look at our sleeved up cards, and of course our two hits had a black parallel, Dylan Cease, the... Uh, Buyback from box number two, Art Shamsky here, 50th anniversary stamped buyback. Whit Merrifield Chrome out of 9.99. Kyle Schwarber Chrome Refractor, numbered out of 572. The team color swap, Yadier Molina. Like I said, not certain here what is different. If I had to guess, actually, I'd probably guess that it's the frame. But if you guys know, go ahead and let me know in the comments. And then, of course, our two hits from the two boxes did have the Chris Sale in the AJ Puck Clubhouse Collection Relics. And of course, box number one didn't have a buyback, but did have the oversized Trevor Bauer. That actually does it here for all four boxes today for Todd. Not only the two Heritage, but all boxes total. Thank you so much, Todd, for letting me open all of these up for you. I hope I was still able to keep the energy up and be very entertaining for this long video here. Maybe when I cut out to the times I had to run and move everything, for me it's showing 48 minutes recording time. It's probably closer to 40 to 45 minutes. I hope I was able to entertain you the whole time. Hope you loved all of your new cards, love your new hits, and of course, enjoy everything that is being added to your collection. Definitely very nice pulls here from the hockey. Not as familiar with Heritage. Uh, I'm just more familiar with the hockey because the hockey is my favorite sport, more knowledgeable. And also I've been able to list all of our hockey cards on eBay. Still haven't gotten around to Heritage. It's just super backed up. Bossman and I are super busy. Bossman prices out the sports card, so it's easier for me to do, like like I said today, mass Yu-Gi-Oh listing on our TCG Player Store. Do have to wait on Bossman to get back prices. Uh, we got through all the select, but I was trying to get him to get through a backlog of football. I'm waiting for him to still price out those Obsidian football boxes from, like, what, December or January? So we'll get there eventually. Actually, I did get a message, I think, from Devon, one of our... Gem Mint fans here asking about tribute base cards. I haven't listed those yet either, so sometime hopefully this week, if not next week. Uh, but definitely very cool to find the team color swap. Those aren't easy to find. And like I said, I feel like we've been seeing more refractors than base chromes, but still gorgeous cards. I am loving the set better in chrome. Tops does have a tendency to make really nice chrome cards. They're chroming everything out. Wonder if Stadium Club Chrome will be back this year. That was new last year. I already have Ginter Chrome on order, so I would think Stadium Club Chrome will be back later this year. But unfortunately, allocation numbers on baseball are tough. But that does it here for these four boxes. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to go ahead and hit that like button. Comments for me. Leave those down below. Uh, you want to roast me for my younger self having the crush on Fipula or for passing over 15 different Molina base cards that we could have compared, or anything else, go ahead and leave that down below. And if you're not yet part of the Titan Cards family, we'd love to have you with us. Make sure you go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button for me. Also, before I get on out of here, this was the only video for the night. We'll be back again tomorrow with brand new opening of Panini Origins Basketball. Boss Man did not bite to the hashtag petition of let Alley open NT football. So unfortunately, we'll not have that tomorrow. I do have boxes available for personal breaks if you're feeling fancy. That'd be kind of crazy, but if you're feeling it, get more power to you. But I will be able to open up an Origins basketball box tomorrow. And of course, more personal breaks. Uh, but I do have to give a big shout out to all of our channel members. Thank you so much, you guys, for going above and beyond with your support of the channel. Really do appreciate it. We have six Black Label fans, Andon, Bounty Hunter Breaks, Epicenter Gaming, Sean F., Stephen Olivo, and Stephen Bly. Also do have nine Gem Mint fans, Alberto M., Anthony Basileo, Chris Rivers, D. Vaughn, Dusty Archuleta, Jerry Geek, Jake Rhino C., Joe Howe, and Michael C. But thank you so much to all of our channel members. Really appreciate each and every one of you. And all members do have their name shown on screen at the end of every single video. But that does it for me tonight. Definitely going to take a long time to export this video. So hopefully it's up in the near future. It is 7.30 for your guys' reference right now. But thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!